Hello everyone, we're here with Professor Sachidanand Tripathi from IIT Kanpur. He is the winner of the Infosys Prize 2023 in Engineering and Computer Science for his work into the deployment of large-scale sensor-based air quality network and his work into understanding air pollution using machine language. Thank you so much for being here with us, Professor Sachidanand. It's lovely to have you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. And, you know, I love to talk to the print. Wonderful. Uh, could we quickly begin off with a little bit of context and background about yourself, you and your work? Uh, well, I'm an um, uh, environmental engineer. Uh, and, uh, you know, I uh, came to India in 2003. I started my career as a faculty member at IIT Kanpur. And for 19 years, I was a faculty member in civil engineer engineering. And now I'm also associated with Department of Sustainable Energy Engineering. Okay. So I'm faculty in two departments at IIT Kanpur. And I work in the area of air quality um, management uh, in a broadest way, of climate change, and also urban sustainability. And uh, in IIT Kanpur, could you tell us a little bit about how um, being in uh, the faculty of civil engineering, you were able to work on, uh, you know, air molecules in the, for your research. So IIT Kanpur actually is a pioneer in starting environmental engineering curriculum in the country back in 1960s. This is the first engineering institute to start a full-fledged program in environmental engineering as a part of civil engineering. I am, I am a civil engineer by training, and then I then moved into environmental engineering for doing my further, you know, higher studies. So yes, uh, I, uh, the department hosts a number of faculty members and a program in master's as well as at PhD level in environmental engineering. And that's where actually I kind of pursued my work in air quality, aerosols, climate change, and now a lot into, uh, you know, sustainable cities. Ah, lovely. And as a part of your work, and especially as um, the part of the world that was recognized by the Infosys Science Foundation, you have been working on mitigating air pollution as well as, um, you know, understanding it. Uh, you have placed over 1000 sensors in different locations to collect data for analysis of, uh, you know, particulate pollution. Could you tell us a little bit about how the project came along and how it's developing? Yeah, so well, actually, back in uh, 20, uh, 2017 or so, uh, we I led a project uh, where we looked into the all part of, you know, um, air quality monitoring, uh, what we call sensing, making sense of the data, where we uh, developed, you know, uh, indigenous sensors, and then how it can measure particulate matter and NOx and ozone. We did several deployments. Uh, in different cities, uh, Mumbai, Delhi, we also did deployment inside IT Kanpur, a small network of 25, 25 sensors and 40 sensors in Delhi. And then we had a lot of learning. And then as you know, that project progressed, then we realized that, well, um, this require, of course, uh, the expertise, uh, not only from air quality engineer like me, but also from electrical engineer who can uh, build these chips on which the sensors are placed, on which uh, the data storage system is, you know, uh, placed and all that. And then this kind of data also require to correct the data, right? Because these sensors are very, very uh, low cost compared to the current regulatory grade monitors. So we, we thought that, okay, we also need to work with machine learning and AI experts. And that is how my learning also got, you know, uh, honed in that way. And so then we uh, kind of diversified into many problems of machine learning AI, which can be broadly classified into uh, mainly making the data perfect, uh, increasing the uptime of measurements, classifying the data so that we can understand hot spot, we can demarcate air shed, micro air shed, et cetera. We also ventured into forecasting problem, and we also looked into the problem of imputation and sighting of sensors that if you have limited amount of fund and you want to maximize the citizen satisfaction how do you place the sensor so that you can achieve your goals so there are many such problems we started working which we worked first in part of that project which was sponsored by department of science technology 
And then I'm also now running a center as a principal investigator, which is called Atman, and which is mainly funded by private you know, entities, various philanthropies, government subsidiaries, and industries. And where, as you rightly said, one of the flagship project of that center is called Amrit, where we are putting one sensor in every administrative block of the two largest states of India, Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. And till today, uh, we have already put 1,100 sensors. And by middle of next month, we should be having one sensor in every block, which actually will amount to 1,400 sensors across the two states. But in addition to that, in the meanwhile, we also had a couple of other networks, sensor network, which we deployed, which were in the city of Lucknow, where we put 70 sensors. These are different than this current project which is going on. And 40 sensors in each city of Guwahati, Chennai, Kanyakumari, and Jaipur. So this is a kind of network currently we are running in the country. And uh, you obtain all kinds of air pollution data and aerosol data from uh, these specific sensors that are there. And all of them, um, all the data comes into your server, is it? All the data comes to my server and we are working closely with the city officials and the government officials in both, both Bihar and Uttar Pradesh. Uh, Bihar government is already making use of many of these data. For example, I told you that uh, we now have developed the technology to uh, figure out the air shed, which is a new approach to deal with the problem of air quality management, rather having to design the air quality around the administrative units like the district, city, or let's say uh, divisions. Air pollution does not follow man-made boundaries. And they follow, they have their own natural flow. So which actually is called something like air shed and micro air shed. Now, without having sufficient data, it's very difficult to figure out where the air shed will be. Now we have been very, we have been able to figure out the actual geographical spread of air shed and micro air shed over Bihar using a couple of machine learning techniques. And some of these and many other such information is being used by Bihar. And we also have given access to the data which we have we have been storing and, you know, and that is what is streaming into our IT content. Yes. And through all of this data, the large amount of, well, big data that you collect, you are also able to analyze it and discover, um, I believe you were working into understanding haze formation and also like different ways in which aerosols form. Is that also a part of ongoing research from this data? Yes, that's, that's correct. So uh, using this data, we are also trying to kind of getting more fine grained granular information about, you know, people's exposure. So just to give you an idea that these two states, if you put together all the monitors, they were 90. Now we have added 1100 sensors. Now 1100 sensors actually brings down the spatial resolution from 5000 square kilometer uh, one data point to 300 square kilometers. So we have improved the spatial resolution by a factor of just about 20. But that is still not enough. 300 square kilometers is a large area where large number of population are exposed to very different kind of pollution concentration, right? So there we are also using, making use of satellite images and artificial intelligence pipeline to improve this resolution to half a square kilometer or even better. That's one goal we have, and we have got some very interesting results. Second, we have also looked into the genesis of haze formation over Delhi, and we discovered that what are the factors which contribute to the sudden rise in particulate matter 2.5 concentration in a very short span of time. That is, having about 60, 70 microgram per meter cube of PM 2.5 in winter evenings, about 6, 7 PM, and then that concentration increases to 400 microgram per meter cube by early morning, just about in 12 hours. And we worked it out by making very detailed, precise measurement at also molecular level and other ancillary measurements using these sensors. And then we developed a model which can tell us precisely that it is the biomass burning 
related primary gas emissions, which are primarily driving the nightly growth of particulate matter in Delhi's atmosphere. So just to give an idea that what is this growth and what growth rate we are talking about. So these are, we are talking about the nanoparticle growth rate, which is basically particles having size from 10 to 100 nanometer. They are very, very tiny particles, one of 10,000th of the human hair strand. And we could measure their growth rate with a precision of few nanometer per hour. And what we found that the nightly growth rate of Delhi haze particle is sometime 30 to 35 nanometer per hour, which is three to four times more than what earlier has been seen in the daytime atmosphere of China. And this mm -hmm. actually led us to investigate it more. And then we found out this widespread biomass burning lead gas emissions or primary organic gases are the main culprits for the nightly particle growth and therefore the sudden haze formation in the Delhi's atmosphere. That's very fascinating. There's a lot of like these uh, small, small patterns in human habits that uh, I'm sure you must be uncovering that leads to very specific concentrations of haze and fog and air pollution apart from you know our natural systems. Um, I suppose uh, my last question would be, uh, we have talked about the kind of data that you would collect and the kind of things that you would understand from the data. Can you tell us about the application of all of this that you find out over the next five to 10 years? How is air pollution mitigation going to work if it is based on your findings? So one thing what uh, our data can help the local and regional governments to think differently when they design their quality management. And one example I already gave to you was how the air shed level management and micro air shed level management can yield better result. Second, you know, such kind of data when used in conjunction with other data set, for example, that, uh, you know, how do we have more effective delivery and distribution of liquid petroleum gas, LPG? or let's say CNG, et cetera, can help people, you know, having access to the clean fuel, which will avoid the trash accumulation, trash or solid in a fuel burning, right? And which will be able to break the nexus between energy, trash and fuel uses and the air quality deterioration. So these are some of the examples. The third example I can give you that we are also trying to develop or deploy a network uh, in tandem with the other measurement related to urban mobility, traffic, et cetera, which can help us clearly understand that how the traffic pollution is basically responsible for people exposure and how air quality data can be feed, can be fed back into the traffic management to streamline the traffic movement, avoid congestion, and therefore can also improve air quality and improve humans' health in the cities. So these are the some of the problems which we are working on, which are all linked with clean air, bringing that into the center of cities design, which we I call it cities ecological design, rather than doing only engineering design to achieve sustainable city goals in the near future. Thank you. That was very clear. And of course, we are all heading towards sustainable city goals right now with uh, global warming and the way that pollution and other polluting factors are going. Um, so I hope that there is a lot of uh, very positive outcome from your work and we are all very eager to hear more about your findings whenever they come out. Thank you so much for being with us today. It was lovely chatting with you and all the very best for your future work as well. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving the time and it was great talking to you.